forward one hour of Bible study per week. Wednesday's Hot Topics is happening live, online, on Facebook. Grab your notepad and join Shiloh's pastors at 6.30 p.m. Wednesday evening for Hot Topics, where God's Word is made relevant to your world. Join us on Wednesday for Hot Topics on Zoom, where currently Pastor Patterson is teaching from the book, Paralyzed by Fear or Empowered by Hope, by Dr. Mac Brunson. We're taking a fresh look at Psalm 23. That's Wednesday night for Hot Topics. Seniors Bible Study happens on Thursday night by conference call. Get comfortable and join Pastor Renee Chandler at 6.30 p.m. every Thursday evening. Contact Pastor Chandler for call-in information. There are many ways for you to give and support the ministries here at Shiloh. In addition to receiving cash, we are able to process your credit cards, we offer direct deposit, and we have two apps that allow you to give directly from your cell phone. Download the Givelify app or the Cash app to make direct deposits to Shiloh's Ministries at any time. Your support allows us to continue providing services to our members and our community at large. In case you didn't know, Shiloh has a YouTube channel. We invite you to support us by subscribing to our channel on YouTube at Shiloh MB Church Chicago. On behalf of Senior Pastor Rodney Patterson and co-pastors Sean Thompson and Renee Chandler, we pray that your spirit is ignited and your faith elevated by the Word of God you hear today. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, Shiloh. We're getting ready to give God praise. How many of you out there know that you're blessed? We're celebrating Palm Sunday, the day that Jesus made his entrance into Jerusalem. And because he entered into Jerusalem, he entered into our lives. So we can declare that we are blessed in the city, in the field, when we come and when we go. Come on, put your hands together. Let's give our God some praise. Let me hear you say bless, 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 bless. Let me hear you say bless, 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 bless. We're blessed, we're blessed, we're blessed. We're blessed in the city.
believe you're blessed. Come on. You got to know that life and death is in the power of your own tongue. And you got to speak life over yourself. Oh, I'm telling you, late. That's going to turn. It's going to work in your favor. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. I'm telling you. reading this morning comes from the 21st division of St. Matthew's, beginning at the first verse, ending at the 11th verse. And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem and were come to Bethage, unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you. Straightway ye shall find an ass tied to a coat, and with her loose them, and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught unto you, ye shall say, The Lord hath need of them, and straightway he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek and sitting upon an ass, and a coat, the foal of an ass. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them and brought the ass, the colt, and put on them their clothes, and they set him thereon. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and strawed them in the way. And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he was come unto Jerusalem, 
all the city was moved saying who is this and the multitude said this is Jesus the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee and the word of the Lord is already blessed hallelujah as we prepare to worship God we want to remember that they cried Hosanna as he made his entrance into Jerusalem because the king had made his entrance if you're grateful that he's made his entrance into your life why don't you begin to cry out hallelujah Hosanna to the most high God our praise belongs to him and only him because he's the one who's worthy he did what nobody else could do gave his life to redeem us from sin and so we declare that you deserve it all the glory you deserve it all the honor you deserve belongs to
responsible for bringing him here you are Adrian see me after service please do that listen we honor our pastor Pastor Rodney S. Patterson the greatest pastor in the world we are thankful 
thankful for God for him and all that he does for the Shiloh family. We thank God for our first lady, Sister Char Dr. Charlene Patterson. We thank God for all that they mean to the Shiloh family. Look, it's not too late to share this video and this service for all of you all who are watching virtually with us. You can hit the share button. You can hit the share button. Hit the share button in the bottom left corner on this morning. On today we celebrate Palm Sunday. Amen. Palm Sunday. If it wasn't for Palm Sunday, we wouldn't have a resurrection Sunday. You just can't skip straight to the cross without honoring and paying tribute to the day when he came into, thank you, the city. Because it's Palm Sunday, if you will, turn with me to John, St. John, Gospel according to John, chapter 12. John chapter 12, starting at the 12th verse. John chapter 12, starting at the 12th verse. And it reads, On the next day, much people that were come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. And Jesus, when he had found a young donkey, sat thereon, as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, thy king cometh, sitting on a colt. These things understood not his disciples at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things were written of him and that they had done these things unto him. Therefore, the people, therefore, that was with them when he called Lazarus out of his grave and was raised him from the dead, bear record for this cause. The people also met him, for they heard, for that they heard that he had done this miracle. The Pharisees, therefore, said among themselves, Perceive ye ye prevail nothing behold the world is gone after him I want to kind of hang my hat around uh, verse 12 it's, it says on the next day much people that were come to the feast when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem uh, for the next 27 minutes, I want to talk about what crowd are you in? What crowd are you in? Uh, today is Palm Sunday, a day in which we reflect upon the triumphant entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. And on this triumphal ent entry, we see that the text says that there was a great crowd, according to John. Uh, Mark said that there were many. Luke calls it a crowd. And Matthew calls this crowd a very large crowd. My, my sisters and brothers, a crowd, according to Webster, can be a large number of people gathered together, possibly in a disorganized or unruly fashion. Webster goes on to say that a crowd can be an audience filled with 500 or more people. Goes on to say that a crowd can be a mass multitude of people, uh, those especially considered to be ordinary or anonymous. My sisters and brothers, over the past years, uh, we, can, we have seen what a crowd can do. Uh, we have seen crowds in Minneapolis, 
We have seen crowds in Oregon. We have seen what crowds can do in Atlanta. And we have seen what crowds can do in Chicago. We've also seen what a crowd can even do at the nation's capital. My brothers and sisters, crowds can be found at sporting events, concerts, summer festivals, like the Taste of Chicago and like the house party picnic. Uh, crowds can also become unpredictable, bud, and they can become uncontrollable, which makes crowds a very dangerous place to be. As I've grown in years, I've noticed, Larry, that I don't like crowds like I used to like crowds. Uh, but I remember a time, bud, when we used to go to the 50-yard line, uh, when we used to line up to go into Laristo's, when we used to go into the apartment lounge, when we used to go to Geno's, when we used to go to E2. Come on, talk back to me. When we used to go to M Lounge, we ain't always been saved. When we used to go to our spot, we wouldn't go too early, but we waited until the crowd got there. We waited on the crowd to get there because you, if you knew that there was a crowd that was going to be there, you knew there was unlimited possibilities of what could happen within the crowd. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, if we're not too holy on Palm Sunday to admit, we all have participated in some type of crowd. It may have been a Stevie Wonder concert. It may have been an R. Kelly concert. It may have been a Bulls game, a Broadway production, a Tyler Perry play. It might have been a Bears game. It might have been a Cubs game, maybe a White Sox game. Huh? It might have been at your college homecoming. It might have been at a pep rally. It might have been at the Bud Billiken parade. It might have been at a political protest. My brothers and sisters, just even coming to church on Sunday, we have found ourselves as part of a crowd. My brothers and sisters, as I hurry along today, as we look at the text and mark the day that is known as Palm Sunday, I want to examine the crowd that was there on this particular day. For in that crowd, Larry, we will find ourselves and those around us. So I pose the question, Annette, what crowd are you in? Rodney, the first crowd that I want to examine is the confused crowd. If you can type that in the comments without getting distracted, type back the confused crowd. The text says in Matthew 21, 10, it says, When Jesus came to Jerusalem, everyone in the city was excited and asked, Who can this be? The crowd answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. My brothers and sisters, the confused crowd doesn't recognize Jesus for who he truly is. The confused crowd sees Jesus as a good man. The confused crowd sees Jesus as a prophet or a wise man. The confused crowd doesn't understand God's plan for their life. Uh, the confused crowd may confess that Jesus is Lord, but yet believe that their own works and not God's grace will save them. The confused crowd represent many of those in the present day and that present day that thought Jesus was coming to overthrow a Roman Empire. The confused crowd thinks that Jesus has come to Jerusalem to announce his candidacy, candidacy for king. The confused crowd has mistaken Jesus as who he really is and thinks that he is some political figure like Barack Obama. My brothers and sisters, unfortunately, our churches and congregations are filled with folks on the virtual internet who fit under this mold. They are confused, Annette, and have the wrong intentions. Many people are the same today. They see her God as their piggy bank and they see God as their life raft, but they are confused and don't see God as their reason for living. 
Let me say that again. Many people that are in the congregation are confused and think God is their piggy bank and their lottery ticket and their life raft, but they don't see God as enough of a reason just to live all by itself. Uh, I've come to let somebody know that is confused on this Sunday. You got it twisted. God is not somebody like I dream of genie that you can rub a lamp and and get what you want. You are confused. Jesus didn't come into the world to perform a magic act. You are confused. Jesus wasn't just a normal man that had a wife, a baby mama, and some drama. Jesus didn't come through 42 generations just so he can organize a family reunion on Palm Sunday and Palm Sunday weekend. You've got it confused. Jesus didn't come because man had everything Thing together Jesus came because man had everything all jacked up my brothers and sisters uh, Jesus is the son of God who was there in the beginning of creation who saw that we was jacked up and messed up from the floor up so don't get it confused Jesus didn't come uh, just so that we could come to church and act like we got it all together he didn't come that we can come and get on the internet and act like everything is all right uh, Jesus didn't come because we were sinless he came because we were sin fall and so I posed this question to you uh, over the internet are you part of the confused crowd but my brothers and sisters as I move forward I must examine uh, another crowd and this crowd is called the pretenders crowd the pretenders crowd uh, type that back into your comments if you can't if you can do it and not get distracted uh, it's the pretenders crowd in John 12 and 37 it says he had worked a lot of miracles among the people but they were still not willing to have faith in him my sisters and brothers the reality is that pretenders are often present but have no real commitment to Jesus uh, if we look at pretenders pretenders want to be seen but will not surrender control of their lives uh, we see this many times if we can think back to when we used to come to church Sunday after Sunday Pretenders come to church Sunday after Sunday out of habit or routine. Uh, pretenders come, uh, come to church on Sundays to get their wife or husband off their back. Pretenders come to church because they know Big Mama said it don't matter how late you stay out Saturday night on Sunday, you got to come to church. Uh, pretenders come to church to ease their conscience so they can tell somebody on Monday that they went to church on Sunday. Are you with me? Uh, pretenders come to church, some of them, just because they have a title before their name and they can sit on the sidelines of church and look down their nose and roll their eyes at people and not even have a real encounter with the God that we serve. Pretenders are basically spiritually blind and can't even quote John 3.16. But they can tell you what you wore and how you wore it to church and how you could have wore it better. Pretenders will tell their friends not to like you but just because they don't like you. Pretenders are easily influenced by what they believe to be the power and the movers and shakers of the church. My brothers and sisters, there's a church found in the book of Revelation that would be a church of pretenders. They had a name, they went through the motion, but their lives and hearts were lukewarm at best. 
the message that we have on this Sunday to pretenders is that pretenders make God sick. My brothers and sisters, pretenders are playing church. Pretenders are acting like they love the church. Pretenders act like they love the pastor. Pretenders act like they are having a good worship. Pretenders actually deserve an Academy Award for Best Lead Actor and Actress for their performances on Sunday morning. Because when they leave the church, or sometimes even when they get on the church parking lot, uh, they don't live anything like the way they just acted while they were in the church pretenders can speak in tongues but can't speak to their neighbors sitting on the same row with them pretenders uh, can jump hop roll do cartwheels in the church but get quiet and put their finger up when it's time to give offering pretenders can uh, come in the church Sunday after Sunday but won't log in to Bible study on Wednesday pretenders are at like they're having an encounter with God but the truth of the matter is they haven't had an encounter with God since they was baptized when they was eight and seven years old. My brothers and sisters we've got to be careful not to get caught up in the crowd of pretenders because pretenders are just going through the motions for a couple of hours here and there and when the reality hits them uh, we realize that they are pretending to be a part of the body of Christ uh, I ask you on this Palm Sunday are you real or are you part of the pretenders I'm halfway home we have uh, those who are confused we have the pretenders. But my brothers and sisters, there is another crowd that we must examine. And this is the curious crowd. Curious. Type it in your, in your comments. If you can type it, spell it right and not get distracted. The curious crowd. C-U-R-I-O-U-S. The curious crowd. In the text, it says that a crowd came to meet Jesus because they had seen him call Lazarus out of the tomb. They kept talking about him and this miracle. My brothers and sisters, the curious crowd on that day thought Jesus along the same lines as a circus or a magic act. Brothers and sisters, their minds uh, had taken them back to the awesome wonders that they had seen Jesus do. Uh, they remembered him calling Lazarus from the grave. They remembered him healing a little girl. They remember a woman with an issue of blood touching the hem of his garment and becoming whole. They remember a blind man receiving his sight. They remember a lame man starting to walk. They remembered and they had even heard about Jesus taking a two-piece fish meal and feeding 5,000 souls. My brothers and sisters, they had heard about what Jesus did, but the curious crowd came on that Sunday because they just wanted to find out for themselves. They were seeking the amazing experiences and the emotional and paranormal experiences that they had heard about, but yet what makes them the curious crowd is because they are not necessarily looking for truth. They were just looking for something that would make them feel better. My brothers and sisters, what I like to call this crowd in the Baptist church, Rodney, is they are the nosy crowd. 
Yeah, the nosy crowd. This is the crowd of people that aren't committed, but who just want to come and have a good time just for personal gratification so that they can say they were in the crowd. You know what I'm talking about? Those are the folks that as soon as they get out of church, they can't tell you what the preacher preached about, but they can tell you we sure did have church on today. The nosy crowd could care less about the meaning of what is going on all they want to do is hurry back and get back to their house so they can get on the phone and call somebody and say girl you missed it today such and such had on this color wig her nails was messed up but she had a Gucci purse she must have got her stimulus check uh, the nosy crowd wants to call back somebody and tell them you know pastor showed did preach long on the day but they can't tell you what did pastor actually preach about uh, my brothers and sisters the nosy crowd can tell you how many songs the choir sang how long they sang them and who played the instruments but they can't tell you what was the actual meaning of the song I give my life away my brothers and sisters if we are not careful you will get caught up in the curious crowd and not have a clue what's going on all around you. You've got to be careful of being in the curious, nosy crowd because while you are being a spectator, there are people around you huh, that are being active participants. If you didn't come to church to be an active participant, I've come to serve notice to you that you will end up and get caught up gazing at the stars. If you're not careful, everybody around you will be getting blessed and you're looking around wondering why you ain't getting blessed. Baby, I've come to tell you that the nosy crowd don't come to give God no praise. The nosy crowd don't pay attention to the call to worship that says uh, come into his presence with singing and thanksgiving know ye that the Lord he is God and it is he has made us and not we ourselves I'm about to get happy the nosy crowd don't know Psalms 150 that says let everything that have breath praise the Lord the nosy folks are the folks that don't raise their hands and say yes the nosy folks are the ones that don't open their mouth and give God some praise. My brothers and sisters you've got to be careful that you don't get caught up in the curious nosy crowd. Huh. We've got the confused crowd. I'm done. We've got the pretenders. We've got the curious but my brothers and sisters, there is one other crowd that I must examine. There is a crowd called the victorious crowd. Type it in your comments, the victorious crowd. V-I-C-T-O-R-I-O-U-S the victorious crowds. My brothers and sisters, as we look at the committed crowd, as we look at the confused crowd, the confused crowd really didn't know who Jesus was. As we look at the pretenders, they were pretending to know who he was, but they were only going through the motions. As we look at the curious crowd, the curious crowd came to be entertained by Jesus. They came thinking that Jesus was like a David Copperfield magic act. They came to see what Jesus was really about. But the good news, my brothers and sisters, is that you can change the crowds that you hang with. What are you talking about, preacher? I'm glad you asked me. You don't have to stay 
in the same crowd that you're in right now. Just like the crowd that shouted Hosanna on Palm Sunday, they changed to a crowd that shouted crucify him. You too can change the crowd that you're in. You don't have to stay in the confused crowd. All you have to do is really find out who Jesus really is. You can find out that Jesus is really the son of the living God. You don't have to be confused and think that Jesus is just another prophet like Isaiah and Ezekiel. You can find that Jesus is actually a mother to the motherless and a father to the fatherless. You don't have to stay confused anymore because you can change the crowd that you're in. You don't have to keep pretending Sunday after Sunday. You don't have to keep going through the motions, but you can really have a relationship with Jesus because my Bible says that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus died for your sins and you accept him as your Lord and Savior, you don't have to pretend anymore. My Bible says that you will be saved. You don't have to be a curious, nosy person no more. You don't have to keep showing up just trying to see what's going on. You can change your crowd and you can become a participant instead of being a, a spectator. You can change your crowd. There's a crowd that is not confused. There's a crowd that are not pretenders. There is a crowd that is not curious. It's called the victorious crowd. But how do I get in the victorious crowd? I'm glad you asked me. Thank you, Holy Ghost. There's one requirement for being in the victorious crowd. And the requirement is that you got to be committed. Type it in your comment section. C-O-M-M-I-T-T-E-D. You've got to be committed. A committed follower of Jesus Christ. A committed follower of what Jesus has said. You've got to be committed without asking questions. You've got to be committed and be obedient and go where God leads you to go. The committed crowd, they understood who Jesus was. They understood what Jesus was doing and they committed themselves to following where Jesus would go because I've heard in the Bible and I've read in the Bible where the committed crowd, they changed their lives and they changed their understanding to follow Jesus. Some of them said, Jesus, I'll go wherever you lead me to go. Some of them gave away their riches. Some of them walked off their jobs. Some of them left their families. Some of them came asking, what must I do to be in the victorious crowd? I'm getting ready to go to my seat. But when you're in the victorious crowd, it's like being in a committed relationship. And you go where your boo goes. And you go where your husband goes. You don't cheat on your husband. And you don't cheat on your wife. The problem with the church is there's people that want to be victorious, but you don't want to be committed. But I've come on this first off Sunday, on this Palm Sunday, to let somebody know 
that when you in the committed crowd, when you're in the victorious crowd, you can't afford to not be committed. You can't cheat on God two Sundays out the month and then try to make up the other two Sundays. I think I need to go higher. I feel that thing right there. It was the committed crowd that followed Jesus all the way to Nazareth. It was the committed crowd that stood around the cross. It was the committed crowd that said he was the king of kings and the lord of lords. I'm happy this Palm Sunday to celebrate Palm Sunday because the victorious crowd, they may have been shouting, uh, who is this man? They may have been confused on Palm Sunday. Some of them may have been uh, pretending uh, to find out uh, who he really was. Some of them may have been curious, but I'm glad that on Friday, uh, some of them, uh, they change their crowds. Pat yourself uh, on your shoulder and say, self, I can change the crowd I'm in. I can be nosy. I can be curious. I can be a pretender. But the good news is that I can change my crowd. I'll believe with my sanctified imagination that on Friday, on Friday, the curious, they saw the nails in his hands. On Friday, the pretenders saw the crown of thorns on his head. On Friday, the curious, and the nosy crowd they saw the blood streaming down the crowd they saw the sun refused to shine the haters they saw the moon start to bleed the opposers they felt the earth begin uh, to reel and rock uh, but I'm glad that the victorious they saw him drop his head and he died but the good news is that the victory wasn't won on that Friday night because the victory it came Early Sunday morning, the victory came early when they went to the borrowed tomb. The Bible says that the stone was rolled away. And when Mary went inside, he was not there because he had snatched the victory from death. Oh, death, oh, death, where is the sting? Oh, grave, Woo! Jesus, he was victorious, but the good news is that he wasn't victorious just for himself. It wasn't just for him. He didn't do it for himself. He did it just for you. He did it just for me. Because of sin, because of shame, because for God, so loved the world he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe on him shall not 
shall not, shall not, shall not, shall not, shall not, shall not, shall not die. But the Bible says we shall have everlasting life. I'm done. May the Lord bless you real well. But I'm glad on this Palm Sunday I've got the victory. I've got the victory. Do you have it? Do you have it? Say yeah, yeah, yeah. I got, I got, I got, I got the victory. B I C T O R Y V. C T O R Y V I C T O R Y I got V I C T O R Y If you got it and you ain't ashamed, type it in the comments. V C O R Y Jesus snatched it. Victory, victory, victory. B I C T O R Y. Do you have it? Do you have it? Say yeah, yeah. Yeah! I got it. I got it. Do you have it? I know I got it. Do you have it? V. I. C. Oh, I, I said, V. I can't let it go, Rich. I see, see, oh, I, V. I see, T O R Y V. I This week, when it looks like the devil is all around you, when you can't see where your hope is going to come from, I need you to remember that you can change your crowds. You can move from defeated to victory. Just remember V I C T O Y V I C T O Y V I C I got one more thing to tell somebody. I know he's all right.
I call you holy, your name is holy, you are so holy to me. I call you holy, your name is holy, holy you are, and holy you oh, 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 yeah. Your name is righteous, you are so righteous to me, oh God, I call you righteous, your name is righteous, righteous you are, and righteous to me, yeah. I want to speak to those who have never accepted Jesus as your personal Savior. We extend the invitation to you on today. There's so much that was said and could be repeated that was said 
on today's message. So more than anything, what we pray for is that you received it, that you took it in your heart, and that you are going to meditate on this particular word on today, Palm Sunday. One thing for sure at this church, we do not want you to be confused about who Christ is. We don't want you to hang in that crowd that's going to keep you confused about it. We don't want you to be a pretender about knowing Jesus. We want you to know Jesus for yourself in true relationship. We don't want you to be curious about the wrong things, the things that's not going to get your life in order with Christ. We don't want you to be confused or pretend or to be curious. What we want for you is victory. We want it to be a victorious thing in your life. We want you to have victory over sin, and that's only done through Jesus Christ. So at this time, those of you who have not accepted Christ, I ask you to pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. And Lord, I want to be saved. I ask you right now, Lord, to come into my heart and take control of my life. Lord, I believe you died for me. I believe you were buried, raised from the dead for my sins and my sins alone. Praise God. And if you prayed that prayer for the first time, you need to know that you have been accepted into the body of Christ. So we extend an invitation to you here at Shiloh. You don't have to join this church, but you need to join the church of God. If you have prayed this prayer for the first time, what we want you to do is contact us. We can give you further instructions. We can give you things that you need to do in order to continue to build up your relationship so you won't stay confused or pretend or curious about something you don't understand. You can reach us at Shiloh10540 at gmail.com. Send us an email if that's your choice or preference. Or you can call the church, 773-779-4990. It's our desire, just like it was for Christ, that all might be saved. And we extend the invitation to you right now. God bless you, and may God keep you. Healer you are, and healer you'll be. Amen. At this time, we're going to bring it to another level and ask that we would all that are under the sound of my voice, that's on, uh, participating in our services on today. If you would do what God is asking us to do in terms of supporting the church in his ministry as we go forward. Second Corinthians 9, 6 states, remember this, whosoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whosoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves, he adores, he admonishes a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. You can give by Givelify, if you have direct deposit, we thank God for you that do. You can give cash app, dollar sign Shiloh 10540. You can drop it off here at the church, and you can give us a call at the church and we'll pick it up if that's what you need. God bless you. May God keep you. And I turn it back over into the hands of our co-pastor, Sean. Listen, God bless you. We thank you for worshiping with us on this Palm Sunday, this fourth Sunday in March. Listen, next Sunday is Resurrection Sunday. 
Resurrection Sunday. Listen, we want to break the internet. We want to have one of the highest viewed worships next Sunday. We got a special guest preacher in addition to our pastor that will be speaking. We want everybody, everybody, call your mama them, your cousin them, brother them. Tell them to worship with you on Sunday. Virtual worship on Sunday. All those that only come to church on Christmas, Mother's Day, and Easter, make sure they tune in next Sunday to Shiloh. Listen, as you go out through this week, remember that you can change the crowd that you're in. You can go from the nosy, from spectators, to curious, from pretenders, to becoming victory. Jesus died so that we can have the victory. Pray with me. Dear God, we thank you for what eyes have seen, what ears have heard. We thank you for the presence of your Holy Spirit that has been in this place and been throughout the internet into the homes of everyone under the sound of my voice. We thank you, God, for Shiloh. Continue to bless the people, dear God. Continue to be with us, dear God. Go before us. Make easy and successful our journeys. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us now, for, now, henceforth, and forevermore. Let every heart say amen, amen, and amen. I love you with the love of Jesus. See you next Sunday, same time, same place, Resurrection Sunday. Thank you.